Good morning, family. God, welcome to the Morning Devo with your brother, DJ Sam Rock. God bless you. Thank you for really waiting and being patient for me to get on his, this live this morning. Um, a lot of issues going on in the morning here. But for sure, I know that there's a lot of words that I describe God, that I use to describe God as. And one of them is my protector, my refuge, my strength. You know, he is the protection that I need to live this life day by day, knowing that he's with me, that he will never abandon me, that he will never put me to shame, that he is available at any time, any place, amen, 247, and he is the one that I turn to in my time of need, my time of trouble. Even when times are good, I still turn to God through the good times and the bad times. Yes, even in the bad times, when you think that you're a believer and there won't be any bad times, there will be bad times as a believer. As a matter of fact, Jesus Christ himself, right, promised that we will have trials and tribulations in this world, but be of great cheer, be of good cheer because he has overcome this world and its systems. Amen. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, for being our refuge. This title today is personal to me because I know for sure if it hadn't been for God, in my life, protecting me, guiding me through, um, I would not be here right now. So it's a grace thing. It's about how God decided to save me, how God decided to protect me. So God is our refuge on the morning Devo. And the question is, what are the words do you use to describe God? Because I know you could describe God in so many different ways, so many different words. Amen. So I describe him as my protector, right? Uh, my savior, my Lord, my God, holy he is all of that to me and way more than what I could ever describe him as. Amen. But I try to use words um, that are personal to me and that mean something powerful in my life. And that's what God is in my life. That's how I just try to describe God. You can't. It's like saying, OK, describe God in a sentence. Uh, it's, I don't think that's possible. But we try to make it more as powerful and personal as we can when we describe God, when we use words. Good morning, Brother Damien. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. So this is the Morning Devo. I try to do these um, every day, every weekday around 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the on the Soul Winners Sell Out Radio Network, Soul Winners with a Z.org as the website as well. So if you know somebody right now that you want to share this with, right, and they don't have social media, they don't need social media, send them right to the website, Soul Winners with a Z.org. And they could um, really plug into what's happening right now on the Morning Devo. And also on the Blaze Baba Study, um, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I try to do those as well. Amen. I try to be remain faithful to God's calling over my life and in my life and working through my life. And what is that calling? To get this message to as many people as possible during my lifetime. So I can leave a nice big footprint right on this earth um, before it's all said and done. So God bless you. Welcome. Don't be afraid to ask any questions. If you have any comments, concerns, any prayer requests, just slide on um, right here on the live. If you're listening on the podcast at someonswithaz.org, welcome to the podcast as well. There should be a way that you could um, reach out through the podcast from whatever platform you're listening from. There should be a way to connect with me if you have any concerns or questions or anything like that. Do not be afraid to ask. Do not be afraid to comment. It's all good over here. This is a safe place. This is a place of refuge, right? No cap. So Psalm 46 verses 1 to 3, that's where we'll be at today for the morning Devo. Three verses, powerful verses in the book of Psalms, um, chapter 46. Sister Joyce, God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to the morning Devo. It's good to see you. Brother Meek, what's going on, bro? God bless you. Welcome to the morning Devo. It's good to see you here. Amen. Uh, for those who don't know uh, who Meek is, you need to follow his page. You need to follow his socials. Um, he's a, a gospel um artist, musician, preacher, evangelist, and he loves the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, he has a testimony that he could um, tell you about how God has been a refuge in his life as well. Sister Elizabeth, God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. It's good to see you. Long time no see, right? So God bless you. Uh, listen, let's get into this Psalm 46, 1 and 3. But before we get into it, let me pray for everybody here. Let me pray for everybody that's going to connect later on. Uh, let's pray um, because I know we all need to be prayed up day by day. We don't know what what's going to happen or what's going to challenge us this day, today, in this time, in this space, in this place. We don't know. So I like to cover things in prayer. Amen. Knowing that as, as long as I connect with the Lord, the first time of the day, the first start of my day, uh, I know for sure 
Amen. That God has the best for me and my family in his mind and in his heart. He has you on his mind. He has you on his heart as well. Amen. God is the protector. God is our refuge. He's the love of our soul. Amen. He's our savior. He's all that is good. Amen. There's nothing bad about God. Only thing that's bad about God is for those who reject him. And it's an awful thing to fall into the hands of a mighty God, rejecting him, shaking your fist at him at the very end. That won't be a good day. That won't be a good eternity for you. So I suggest you really get on board with what God has for your life. Make things right with God. And you might be saying, how do I make things right with God? I messed up. I did this. I did that. Listen, you just have to come to a point of being honest with yourself and admitting that you messed up. I had to do it. 2001, I admitted to God, okay, I tried everything that the world offered. I messed up. What about you? Can you change me? And can you change me by the time I wake up the next day? I was desperate. I needed a change in my life because I knew if I kept on going the way I was headed, kept on going in that direction, it would have been curtains for me. Lights out. Sign now, right? It would have been done. But God is faithful. God is my refuge. He's my protector. Amen. And we're going to prove that in Psalm 46 verses 1 and 3. And I'm hoping and praying that he will be speaking to you in a way that you know that is directly from heaven to your house, to your home, to your mind, to your body, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for another day. I thank you that you definitely are my refuge and my strength. I pray, Lord God, that you will be everyone's refuge and strength. Those who call upon the name of the Lord, Lord Jesus, they're calling upon you. They need to be rescued, saved, born again, delivered from any thing that's coming against them. So I speak life concerning all things living and I come against anything that tries to bring demonic influence, that tries to bring death to the families, that tries to bring death to the person that's watching and listening. I pray against that in the name of Jesus. And I pray for arcing angels, ministering angels, warring angels to guard, protect, to be on full assignment for every single person that's connecting and that's going to connect later on to watch this morning Devo or listen in on your word on the podcast. So I speak life in the name of Jesus and I thank you, Lord God, for giving me another opportunity, a new day to share your word, to share your message to anyone who is available to listen who or anyone who is able to receive your message today and the days going forward. In Jesus name, I praise by faith. Let's take a minute, man, to share out this video to as many people as we can. Amen. Um, and hopefully we could get this to the right people at the right time in their life so that God could speak directly to that individual. I know God speaks directly to me. How I know that? When I read his word, that word is alive in me and I activate the word. I say, oh, there's a promise there. Oh, you doing this for them? I want in on that too. That's just my personality. Whatever God has for me, I want it. Amen. And that could that could go either way. It could be good times and bad times. Yes, I continue to say that it could be bad times in the life of a believer. I know that for a fact. I'm a believer and I go through bad times. Just like anybody else on this planet will go through things. But the great thing of, about being born again, being a Christian, being a follower of Jesus, Yahweh, right? Yeshua HaMashiach, being a follower of him, the one who rescued and saved me. I know that I'm not alone. I'm not alone that I'm not the only person that's going through bad times. I'm not the only person that's going through this, that, and the third. And on top of that, I'm not alone because God is with me and he's with you. Just call upon him. Ask him to be in your life. Make things right with the Lord. Amen. And then he'll make you right with the Father. Because the Bible says, Jesus said, no man, no woman can come to the Father except through me. Right? Because he's the way, the only way, the truth, the only truth, and the life, the only life to live. That's worth living. Amen. So to live is Christ, to die is gain. That's another message right there. But let me give you a minute to share this out. And when we come back, we're going to hit up Psalms 46 verses 1 to 3. I'll be right back.
Wow, wow, wow. That minute goes by so fast. You don't understand. As soon as I look up, the minute's already over. Psalm 46, verses 1 to 3. Psalm 46, 1 to 3 says, God is our refuge and strength. He is this. Our refuge and strength, always ready, always ready. There's never, there's never a time that God is not ready. There's never a time that God is not is. God is the great I am, the God who always is. So, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So, we will not fear. We will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. Psalm 46, verses 1 to 3. Let me read this, how it says it in the Amplified Version. You know me and my Amplified. Uh, I, could, I could get down with the Amplified. It says, Psalms 46 and 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, mighty and impenetrable. That means nothing can penetrate. He has the ultimate, like I'm into sci-fi. I watch sci- science fiction movies. And um, when, a, when a spaceship has a protective barrier called a force field, God is way more than that. <laughs> God actually could go through any force field that we could ever invent, but no one could go through his force field. In other words, he is the one that's impenetrable. No one can harm God. So whether I praise God, I'm not helping God. If I curse God, I'm not hurting God. God is an eternal God. He is almighty, yet he has a gentle spirit. So a very present and well-proved help in a time of need. Keep on going. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change. And we know the earth is changing. No doubt, the earth is changing. And though the mountains be shaken and slip into the heart of the seas. And we see that. We call it natural disasters, right? Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its roaring. Selah, that means ponder, pause and ponder and think about how God is or how good God is. So what does this verse teach about God's presence? Right away, I see right away that God is present at all my times. The good times, the bad times, in my time of trouble, in my time of freedom, in my time of victory, God is present. Amen? God is everywhere here. He's omnipresent. He's all-knowing. So people say, well, you know, I, I'm doing this in a secret. There ain't no secrets um, when it comes to God. God sees it all. Amen? He sees everything that we do in the dark. Amen? And he wants us to come into the light. So that way... Everything that is done in the dark will be eliminated. Exposed? Some people don't like to be exposed. The Bible says in John chapter 3, um, 17, 18 through there, right? That people don't go to God because the light has come into this earth and people hate the light. They want to live in darkness. Listen, I used to live in darkness. That's why I could freely talk about it. And I'll tell you one thing. When you walk or you run in a dark room, you're bound to get hurt. When you walk and, and or you run in a dark room, life you're bound to hurt somebody or you're bound to hurt yourself so god took me out of that darkness and took me into his marvelous light and everything that was exposed in my life was necessary amen i didn't even see the things i was doing that was wrong when i was in the dark people had to point it out people that weren't even serving the lord it was so blatant to them they were like listen man what's going on with you like get out of that that stuff that you're in People who weren't saved were telling me that. That's how bad it was. Yet, people will go around saying, oh, Sam is a good dude. He's a good guy, right? And I was walking in utter darkness. Like, you couldn't tell me if I was doing anything wrong because I didn't recognize it. I didn't see it. It wasn't exposed. But I know all through that time that I was walking in the darkness, I was protected by God himself. He has so much grace upon my life, so much mercy upon my life, that there's no other explanation of why I'm here right now other than his grace and his mercy. So this verse teaches me that God's presence is everywhere, everywhere in the good times, the bad times, when you're sick, when you're healthy, when you're rich, when you're poor, when you're in lack or uh, not in lack. As a matter of fact, if you're a believer, there is no lack in the kingdom of God. So come on this side of things. You might be looking at the news and say, wow, the economy, this, the economy, that I don't have a job. You know, um, how how am I going to pay this? Well, you might not be in the kingdom of God if you're thinking that way, but in the kingdom of God. There is no lack. Everything is taken care of. Amen. We do our part by believing and having and trusting in Jesus the Christ. Amen. And we have it before we see things. In other words, if my bank account looks a little bit shaky and the bills look like mountains, I just trust God 
that will take care of the mountain, right, in my life, will take care of the issues, but I have to do my part. You need money? I need money? I work for it. Amen? I don't rob. I don't steal. I don't manipulate. I don't do nothing like that. I don't ask for money and use it for myself. Amen? For this ministry, uh, everything in this ministry has to come in and go out. Amen? Talk to my accountant. He'll tell you that. Amen? There should be no profits in my ministry because the way I wrote it up as a ministry that helps other ministries and helps other families during their time of need and trouble. So when the money comes in, one way, it'll go out the other way. Amen. And that's the way the kingdom of God is. No one is in lack. Everyone needs to be sharing each other's um, burdens. And we share the wealth as well, especially here. So when it's with a Z.org, everything is checked. Uh, we, we're held accountable by our accountant. Amen. And when the tax time comes, he makes sure that you know, there shouldn't be anything in there. Amen. It should be going through nice and smooth. And God has been faithful with this ministry in that area as well. And uh, I can't I can't even make that up. God's been faithful. So do you think I'm getting calls here? I don't know. My phone lines are not open right now. So do you think of God as your refuge? In other words, do you think that he's your protection when, or your time of your helper in the time of trouble? Do you think that? Because if you don't think that, then you might have to look a little deeper into who God is in your life. Or you might not be serving the true, living, righteous, holy, loving God. The one named Jesus, Yahweh, right? Um, the, the Holy One of Israel, right? You might not be serving the right God. You might be serving a God of this world, which is the enemy. And he, he could even shine himself to look like an angel. He could present himself as an angel, uh, as a, a light. You know, he's the great imitator, but he's also a great liar. Amen. He tries to imitate the things of God. Amen. But he's a liar. There's no truth in him. So be careful who you serve. Be careful who you worship. If it's not the only living, true, one, triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the Christians, Jesus the Christ, then you are possibly being deceived into believing in some kind of cult, religion, or a false God. There's only one true God, and all other gods are false. Or you might be into idolatry, meaning that you might be placing a statue, you might be placing a chakra, uh, you might be placing stones, or you might be placing all these elements of the earth, by the way, um, that have no real value other than being what they are, a rock, a stone, a uh, statue, whatever. You might be placing that in front of God, those things in front of God, and that's idolatry. And you might be speaking to things that have no power. Only power those things have or the power that you give it by believing in those things to do something in your life. But God is not that. God is not something that we made up or that I made up and that I count on. I have to believe. No, I don't have to do anything when it comes to the Lord. I I believe in Jesus because he believed in me first. I love God because God loved me first. God changed my life. So it wasn't a statue that changed my life. And I prayed to statues before. It wasn't Santeria and, you know, black magic. And I dealt with that before in my life. It wasn't a uh, chakra or stones or all that other stuff that changed my life. It wasn't a religion. It wasn't a cult, anything like that. I tried a little bit of this, a little bit of that to try to change my life. And of course, drugs and alcohol and sex and all that stuff was in there too, because I was trying to change who I was. But none of that worked. Everything there was temporary. There was some power, form of power, whatever, but it wasn't true power. So after I did this, that, and the third, I realized that someone got me out of all the mess that I was getting into before God saved my life. So it must have been somebody protected me through prayer. Uh, and then I kind of like started evaluating it. Then 9-11 hit, right? Remember 9-11 when those two buildings went down? Uh, I could see those buildings from where I grew up. I could literally look out the window and see those buildings and, and when I was living in New York. And I was living in PA at the time that that happened, and I was looking at it. That shook me. I was like, wait a minute. Like, we're that vulnerable in the United States. We could be attacked on our very home ground. And then I started realizing, could I be the one that's being attacked right now by someone, an enemy who hates me as well, who wants to take me down as well? So it started making me think differently. But I kept on moving in the direction of destruction until I got to a point where, okay, okay, somebody's lying to me. Something's going on. Uh, I've been protected all this time. Uh, at the time, I was 30 years old. And I was like, 
how did I get out of this? How, I started thinking about it. And I was like, I should have, I, I could have been in that building because I used to go into the building uh, when I used to work for air conditioning and heating systems back when I was in New York. I said, how about if that was the time that I was in the building that the planes crashed into? So I started rethinking this thing and saying, wait a minute, something is wrong here. Somebody's lying to me. So I said, okay, everybody's talking about this Jesus. Everybody's talking about this God as their protector. And they would say, listen, the reason why you will protect us is God has a, a plan for your life. He has a purpose and a plan for your life. He's been protecting you all the time, preserving you all the time. And I still get the, that word, preserving <clears throat> to this very day. <clears throat> Just the other day, a brother in Christ <clears throat> spoke that to me. Again, the frog. A brother in Christ spoke that to me just the other day. He said, God must be preserving you for something. Amen? Because, you know, just this another story. But I know I've been protected. There's been situations, I was surrounded by Latin gangs. Nietas one time and Latin kings another time, surrounded. And I'm here. I had to be a move of God, not the move of the devil. Not the move of Santeria, not the move of a spirit, not the move of um, witchcraft. No, it was a move of God. <clears throat> Preparing me for today. <clears throat> allowing, me, <clears throat> allowing me to speak today. And this frog is coming in and out. So, we will not fear. In other words, we need to personalize these scriptures. Say, you will not fear when earthquakes come. Right? And when mountains crumble into the sea. Those are things that are happening. The, the earth, the world is groaning for the return of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So the earth is moving. The earth is changing. The world is changing. Situations are changing. Listen, there hasn't been true summers and true winters anymore, at least in my region. Since, um, I want to say since the 80s. I haven't seen, uh, since the late 80s, I haven't seen a true winter or a true summer. It's one extreme to the next. There's no in-betweens anymore, right? You used to feel the seasons changing or whatever. Now it's, okay, fall comes, boom, everything happens really quick. Then winter comes, boom, everything happens real quick. Summer, everything happens real quick. Spring, summer, you know what I mean? The seasons are not the same as they used to be when I was, in, when I was a kid in the 80s, right? When I was a young teenager in the 90s, it's not the same anymore. So the earth is changing. If you can't see that, if you don't realize that, um, I don't know what to tell you because it is changing. But to not be afraid, do not be fearful because of the world changing, the earthquakes, all that. What's going on? Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge because why? God is our refuge and God is our strength. So what other words do you use to describe him? Amen. Anybody want to chime in? You want to chime in? What other words do you use to describe God? And you think about it. It could be something as, as deep as you think of or it could be something as, you know, not as deep. Whatever you, however you describe God, is respectful because that's what God usually is doing in your life at the time. He could be your healer. You might be Sister Rachel. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devos. Good to see you. It could be that He's your healer at this time that you're going through health issues, or it could be your your banker as you are finding yourself in a position where you need finances and God gave you a financial breakthrough. So He's your banker. It could be um, your redeemer. That he took you from an uh, old way of li living, paid the ticket of redemption, and now you're redeemed. He could be your fortress. Amen. He could be your prince of peace. When you find peace that this world is not offering, but you find that with Jesus, right? Sister Rachel said he's her savior. Amen. God is so much to me that if I try to give you the words, this will get real boring for you because uh, it'll be word after word, word after word, word after word for like 20 minutes or something. I could keep on going about what God has done in my life. But for sure, God is our refuge and he's our strength. Amen. So never think that God is not able to do anything in your life or able to do something that you feel or that I feel is so big. It's like so much of a mountain that you put the problem higher than the one who can solve it. The Lord is not surprised by anything that comes my way, anything that comes your way. He is already ready, amen, to inter intervene on our behalf, to intercede on our behalf. Do you realize that Jesus, the Bible says, is praying for the saints, praying for his children, amen? He is our lawyer. He is our prayer warrior. He is our savior. He is our Lord. He is our God, amen? He is our refuge and he is our strength. 
There's so many ways to describe God. Amen. Now, the people on the other side of things who don't believe in God, they don't describe God the way the scriptures describe God. They describe God as a dictator, someone who forces you to do this and that, um, as uh, one who left us on this, abandoned on this planet. You know, there's so many different ways negatively that people speak of God because they don't have a personal relationship with God. Because if they did, trust me, they won't be saying anything negative about a holy, loving, righteous God, a just God. You know, I just heard the other day, um, someone said, God is not a just God because he was, if he was a just God, right, um, he would have just um, did away with this planet already. Well, um, they're mixing grace, right, mercy and justice. They're putting that all together. He's a graceful God, amen, meaning that as God's riches at Christ's expense, grace is, uh, the grace of God means that he gives us what we don't deserve. Mercy is God holding back what we do deserve. So grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. Mercy is God holding back what we do deserve. And a just God means that he would judge us rightly. He would judge us rightly. And this man was going on and on. Yeah, God is not a just God. Because if he was a just God, he would have wiped us out already. Hmm. Justice will be served. And Jesus said he is coming back. But we're living in his grace. We're living in his mercy. And the justice of God is not over yet. He is coming back to judge the world, whoever's left here, and the angels, the demons that the devil have uh, kind of like, well, not kind of, deceived them out of heaven, which is, uh, I don't know how that happened. That He deceived the angels out of the presence of the Lord, a third of the angels. And guess who's going to be with the Lord um, judging this world? The saints of God, us, the children of God. I'm just saying, that's what the scripture says. Read it for yourself. So Psalms 46, 1 to 3, read the whole chapter of Psalms uh, of 46, and you'll be surprised with the, with the Lord, uh, how the psalmist is describing the Lord as. Rachel says, in my life span, span, I have never felt alone. I just needed to learn to hear him and listen to him and follow in his ways. Amen. Amen. That's that's a good way of thinking of it. Sister, thank you for sharing with us because um, you never felt alone. That's a blessing that you never felt alone. Amen. There were some times when I felt alone, surrounded by so many people when I was growing up. The popularity was there. I was surrounded by people all the time, but uh, I still felt lonely. I can't I can't explain it, but I felt lonely, surrounded by all these people, getting all involved with all these relationships, girls and all these clubs and all that stuff. And I still felt lonely. Uh, I felt like I was abandoned. I think that has to do with my childhood when my dad when my dad passed away. I was only 15 years old. So um, I think that was, was the missing component. I wanted, to, I wanted a man, my father, to look at the things that I was doing and say that he was proud of it. Amen. Uh, that's why I make sure that my son now, I tell, I tell him as many times as I can that I am proud of him. Amen. Because I was hoping that I heard that from my dad. He, he used to say that he was proud of me when I used to play sports or whatever, but it was a short time together. You know, I, I can only do so much um, by the age of 15. But he saw me um, doing, you know, the whole um, up rocking thing, the dancing. He saw me do the break dancing a little bit, and then he was out of here. For whatever reason, God took him at such a young age. I don't know, but I'm hoping and praying that he gave his life to the Lord, made things right with him. Right. So that way we can have eternity together on the other side and it will be a great reunion of my life. Right. Uh, one of those type of things that you have um, family members in heaven just waiting for you re- for the, to get reunited. And that will be an amazing thing, an amazing time in the Lord, an amazing time in eternity. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. So that's all I had. Um, apologize for my lateness this morning, um, but I couldn't get my thoughts together. Uh, When I wanted to speak of this, uh, I had to make sure that what I was saying was from God and not anything of my opinion. So I had to look at the scripture and make sure I was hearing from the Lord. Amen. Before I start speaking. That's just the way I am. Um, If I'm supposed to go on at 10 and God is changing something in the message or anything like that, I'll wait. Right. For God to speak, for me to listen and for me to go on. Amen. No rush. I'm not. I'm really. I'm not on a TV network or anything like that. Uh, I just wonder about TV networks a lot. You have to be ready. When the time goes, you have to be ready and all this other stuff. Um, I thank God for live streams and for podcasting that 
I'm ready when he says I'm ready. Not when someone's on top of you saying, listen, it's time to go. It's time to get on the lights, camera, action thing. I don't know about that when it comes to ministry. I, I'm not sure about that stuff. But God will anoint people for that. Amen. But I don't think I'm the one he anointed for that. I think I'm the one he anointed to preach the gospel, to share the gospel with as many people as I can, and not to be on a time clock when it comes to sharing his word. That's just me, my personal conviction. Amen. Sister Joanne, good morning. God bless you. I know I haven't been with you for a while. I am fighting some other things that are going on with me in my life, but I never give up with God. God is too good with me. I am waiting for the finish to finish this medicine that I am on and then go and get my shot. Uh, I'll care, I can't wait to go back to church. Um, love. Uh, I love you. So God bless you. God bless you too, Sister Joanne. Joanne is a, a warrior. She's been fighting uh, for her life, knowing that God has her life though. And she gives it all to God. And she continues to press forward through all her health issues, through all her life issues. She And she always gives glory and praise to God. And she cannot wait to reconnect to the body uh, of, of the church. Amen. The, where she goes to Transformation Church. So uh, we continue praying for you, Sister Joanne. Trust me. Um, your name comes up a lot in my prayer. Amen. And I'm praying for you and your family. And um, I thank you for staying connected. Amen. And I know God has so many victories um, that you could testify about, about, that he has been your refuge, he has been your strength. And you could literally, literally say that and be honest about it because you experienced God as all of that in your life. So thank you for sharing, Sister Joanne. We miss you too. We miss you too. Amen. Amen. So I may not get on every time, but love to hear your word for the day. Thank you, Brother Sam. Many blessings to you and your family. Oh, thank you so much. I'm humbled by that. Amen. Um, yeah. Uh, I do this because I love love the Lord, and I hope and pray that you know somebody else will get something from this as well. So thank you so much, um, Sister Rachel is a great servant of the Lord. Amen. Uh, and it's just uh, a wonderful person, and God is just doing great things in her life and her family. Um, it's just amazing, right? Uh, how God does things in our lives, and Amen. We give Him the play, praise, and glory, and honor. But I'm here to do as as best as I can. Amen. I don't edit these morning devos. Uh, if I make mistakes, drink water, get a, a frog in my throat, whatever, I just keep moving with it because I want you to realize that I'm a real person um, with real issues, um, but I also serve a real God, a man who is able to do everything his word says he would do in his word. I'm just saying. So test God at his word. That's the best thing you could test out. Amen. Uh, test God at his word and see if he doesn't do a great thing in your life. Because he's been doing a great thing in my life. And I know he's been doing great things in other people's lives. Amen. Brother Benny, God bless you, bro. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Amen and amen. It's good to see you here. So I'm out. I don't have nothing else to say other than for you to read Psalm 46, the whole chapter for yourself. We just read verses 1 to 3. And right there, God is our refuge and strength. I could do a whole message or write a whole book about God being my refuge and my strength. Because if I, I know... It's definitely not the enemy that got me this far. It's all God. And it was a, a God thing all the way from beginning to end. And I know that he has more for me. He has more for you. Amen. As we continue to trust, believe, and just obey his commands. Amen. As we move forward. Not understanding everything because I truly believe no one can understand everything about God. No one can understand everything that happens in life. But we can understand what he's doing in our life at the present time that we need him to help us out. He is our refuge. He is our strength, according to Psalm 46. So read the whole chapter for yourself. I hope you have a great day. I hope you come back. Hopefully tonight I'll be available for the, the Blaze Bible study, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And remember always that not only does God keep you, amen, not only does God pray for you, Jesus prays for us, amen, but always remember this. I always say this, and I'll be saying this until heaven comes to get me, that God is good. He's so good. Peace.